One thing that witches don't do, that alkanes do, is undergo halogenation reactions. If we just take a general alkane here, our CnH2n plus 2, react it up with X2. X is a very frequently used symbol for general halogens. Okay, so you see X2, you think, well, we're just talking about halogens there. So what happens is that one of the hydrogens goes away. So now we've got 2n plus 1, same number of carbons. And instead of that hydrogen, we now have an X on there. So we're substituting an X, a halogen atom for hydrogen. And that hydrogen goes with the remaining X to make HX like that. So that's the general halogenation reaction. And I'll also say X is Cl or Br. So it works for chlorination. It works for bromination. Um, F2 is just too reactive. This is not the way that you would make fluoroalkanes. And iodine is just too slow. There's other ways in which you can make iodoalkanes. In other words, an alkane with an iodine on there. But for chlorine and particularly for bromine, um, it works rather nicely. Now, it goes via a so-called free radical mechanism, in particular, a chain free radical mechanism. Now, what do we mean by a mechanism? Well, a mechanism is just the steps um, through which a reaction passes. So instead of talking about this disgusting looking general case, let's just go with methane. You take some methane, you act it up with chlorine in the presence of light. And again, you can see one of those hydrogens gone away, a chlorine come instead of it, and the hydrogen went with the other chlorine. Now, the first step of this mechanism is where that light energy breaks apart the Cl-Cl bond. So you're left with this funny little symbol here. Instead of Cl2, you now have two Cls, and then there's that big dot there. Now, of course, when you break a chlorine molecule in half, you have two chlorine atoms. So that's what we got there. But because we're emphasizing that it has that unpaired electron, we call it a free radical. Free radical is, in its most general sense, just a species that has an unpaired electron. And of course, electrons don't like to be unpaired. Well, anyway, that is where we get this free radical from. The light breaks apart the chlorine bond into two chlorine atoms, two chlorine free radicals. Now, we say that this is the initiation step of that chain reaction. This is what starts it off. Now, in the second step, one of those chlorine atoms or chlorine radicals bumps into a methane molecule. And when it bumps into a methane molecule, it says to that methane molecule, give me one of your hydrogens. So we make HCl. And now, of course, this methane molecule no longer has that hydrogen, but it has an unpaired electron. It's not like you're breaking a bond and the whole hydrogen is going away with both electrons. That chlorine came in, took away the hydrogen atom and one electron, leaving behind an unpaired electron on that methyl group. And this is a methyl radical. So what we've done in this step is we've taken one free radical and we've made a new free radical. So this is called a propagation step. Propagation step is where you already have a free radical and you just make a new free radical. Initiation, you make the free radicals. Propagation, you change the identity of the free radical. Now that methyl radical will go ahead and find another chlorine atom. And it grabs that chlorine atom and makes methyl chloride there, um, or uh, chloromethane. And then, of course, you've got a Cl radical back again. Okay, so this again is a propagation step because you've made a new free radical. Essentially, you've gone from the methyl free radical to a chlorine free radical. Now, at this point, anytime you're thinking about a mechanism, you always want to make sure that it makes sense in light of your overall reaction. So our overall reaction has a CH4 and Cl2 as the reactants. Well, there's the Cl2 reacting, there's the CH4 reacting. And then we also want to make CH3Cl and HCl as the products. Well, there we are. We make HCl in the second step and we make CH3Cl in the third step. So we've got a sensible mechanism that is explaining our reaction. Now this keeps going on and on and on and on. Lots and lots and lots and lots more propagation. Okay, And at this point we need to think about what's actually going on at this atomic and molecular level. Well, you have a Cl atom. 
And that CL atom is really reactive. Free radicals are really reactive. And what's it going to look for? Well, it's going to look for something with which to react. And most of the stuff that is in the reaction mixture is going to be methane molecules or other chlorine molecules. Well, of course, if it reacts with another chlorine molecule, it would just make another chlorine free radical, so we don't even see that. But if it reacts with the methane, then we see exactly what we want to see. Now, similarly, we make this methyl free radical, and that's going to be bouncing around looking for something to react with. And what it will find more often than not is a chlorine molecule, so we can have that second possible propagation step. So you get lots and lots and lots of propagation because the common species in there are the reactants, CH4, that's a reactant in one of the propagation steps, and Cl2, that's a reactant in the other propagation step. But there are, of course, possibilities that one really reactive free radical will bump into another really reactive free radical. Now, one type of free radical we can have is just where two chlorine free radicals bump into each other. And of course, if they do that, they make chlorine. That's fine because chlorine is one of our reactants and we'll just react that a little bit further. Or you could have a chlorine free radical and a methyl free radical bump into each other. Well, if they do, they make CH3Cl, so that's cool too. That's one of our products. I should note that just about all the CH3Cl is made through this propagation step than via this step here, but even so, it's still rather nice, okay? But then the one thing you don't want happening is a methyl free radical bumping into another methyl free radical that would come together to make ethane. And of course, ethane's nothing to do with the reaction. It's neither a reactant or a product. So we don't really want that methane formed. Anyway, all three of these possibilities kind of end the lives of two free radicals. And so they are called termination steps. Now, I trust you've seen these chain reactions with these little steps at different stages through your career. They are discussed at various times. They can be discussed for polymerization. They can be discussed for these halogenation reactions. They can be discussed for other free radical reactions. And we'll certainly see it again as we start talking about alkenes. Now, one of the nasty things about these halogenation reactions of alkanes is you can make multiple products. So first of all, you can have lots of chlorination going on. So let's think about the reaction we just looked at. Methane plus chlorine makes this chloromethane or methyl chloride plus HCl. Well, now you've got this CH3Cl floating around in the reaction mixture. Okay, and that could also bump into a Cl radical, and that Cl radical could do the same reaction to make CH2Cl2. And then you made some of those, and some of those could be bumping around, and they could bump into a chlorine, chlorine free radical, making CH3 or CHCl3, and then molecules of that could bump around and be chlorinated again. So in other words, if you do this for long enough, you'll have a big mixture of products where you've got the monochlorinated, the dichlorinated, the trichlorinated, or even the tetrachlorinated version of methane. Now, a lot of times in a chemistry lab, you really don't want a reaction that's got lots of mixtures of products, because if you have mixtures of products, you have to separate out those different products from the mixture. It is worth noting that this particular reaction is a very important one at the industrial level. They do it at greater than 400 degrees Celsius, so everything is gas and they get this big mixture of products. But then of course, when you look at the different products, the boiling point of this chloromethane minus 24 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it is actually a gas at room temperature. Dichloromethane or methylene dichloride is a liquid at room temperature, boils at 40, chloroform boils at 61, and tetrachloromethane or carbon tetrachloride boils at 77 degrees Celsius. So whenever you've got products that have different boiling points, of course, industrially, you can do a nice fractional distillation on it. So we wouldn't use this chlorination of methane in our teaching lab to try to make some nice particular product. But it is important at the industrial level because at the industrial level, they can just sort of bulk do things, in particular, this fractional distillation with these products.
Now, there's another way in which you can get multiple, multiple products formed, and that's where there's more than one monochlorinated product, right? With methane, didn't matter which hydrogen goes first, you'll make this monochlorinated methane. But on the other hand, think about butane here, okay? If you've got butane, you've got carbons that are at the end of the molecule, and then you've got carbons and those hydrogens that are in the middle of the molecule. So if we react butane up with chlorine, then we can actually make two isomers, one chlorobutane, where we take one of the hydrogens off the end carbon here and replace it with the chlorine, or two chlorobutane, in which is one of the hydrogens off the second chlorine atom. Okay. Now, when you do this, you make 28% of this isomer and 72% of that isomer. But the reasons for that are well beyond the A-level curriculum, and so they make up our extension material for this particular module. So if you're interested further, pop into the extension material and we'll take apart the reaction, first of all, of butane with chlorine, and then an isomer of butane methyl propane with chlorine. And it gives a nice mechanistic explanation of what goes on. But that's the extension material. If you don't want to be extended, we are now finished with our first module in organic chemistry.